Hi everybody, this is Chris, the Flying Team Manager at the Kite Loft in Ocean City, Maryland. And I'm back again this week for another edition of Fun with Flags. And I want to apologize in advance uh, for the length of this video. Um, because this week we're going to be doing the flag of the state of Maryland. All right? And just like the, uh, how the state flag is pretty involved, so is the history of how we got to this. Um, so I'm going to go through it and you know, try to be as thorough and uh, detail-oriented as possible. So, we have the official flag of the state of Maryland. By far the coolest flag in the entire country. Uh, it definitely pops compared to uh, many of the other U.S. state flags. Um, and it's a true heraldic banner. You know, this flag predates the founding of the United States. Uh, this goes back to Great Britain, um, to um, the... Uh, the Calvert family coat of arms. Uh, the Calverts were the the proprietary family that, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, owned the colony of Maryland. Um, Maryland was not subject to the direct rule of the King of Great Britain. Uh, it was subject to the rule of the Calvert family. All right. Maryland was founded as a haven for religious freedom, uh, specifically for British Catholics, but other religious groups were welcome as well. Um, that aside, um, I'm going to come back to this uh, because in order to get to this flag, uh, you need to understand um, where uh, Maryland's flag uh, started and you know what the early uh, ideas were for a flag for Maryland. And it takes us back to the, uh, the French and Indian War. Okay? Um, this was the flag that was used in that conflict. Now, a lot of people think that the French and Indian War was a war between the French and the Indians. That's not what the French and Indian War was. The French and Indian War involved the British on one side versus the French and the Indians on the other side. And it was a conflict over who gets to control the Ohio Valley. All right, this is in the 1750s. And there were two fortresses out in modern-day western Maryland. Uh, might have been a little closer to West Virginia, but it's in that general area. Uh, Fort Duquesne and Fort Necessity. All right, these were two forts that, um, you know, uh, major battles took place. Uh, for control over the Ohio Valley. And um, this flag, this is called the Calvert Arms, this flag was used by Maryland troops uh, from the colony of Maryland who fought alongside the British in the conflict against the French and the Indians. All right. So this is where this flag gained its notoriety. It was only used twice in you know each of those battles. Um, and then you know, it kind of went away. It wasn't really used again um, because it was strictly a military flag. All right, so it's cool. I mean, it, it screams Maryland. You know, you just have, it's the black and yellow portion of the state seal, the state coat of arms, with the British flag placed in the corner. All right, so that's the Calvert Arms. It's basically, you know, it was basically the first flag used to represent Maryland in an armed conflict. All right. So, fast forward to the American Revolution. Obviously, the British flag gets taken out, and we get this, all right? The Lord Baltimore flag. This flag was used uh, mainly by um, regiments in the Continental Army who were from Maryland uh, in our fight against the British during the American Revolution. Um, it's, again, it's just the black and yellow portion of the... Uh, coat of arms. It was used not just in the militia, but sometimes it would appear on uh, privateers. Uh, not very often, though. The flag that appeared mostly on vessels that were from Maryland uh, was this next one I'm about to hold up. It's a black and yellow 13 striped flag. Uh, this was you know, a privateer flag, uh, you know, used on Maryland vessels in the Chesapeake Bay and the surrounding areas. Um, basically a Maryland naval flag. 
All right, so that's another neat one. Fast forward to the American Civil War. All right, but keep in mind, at this, at this point in time, the idea of state flags really didn't exist. Um, you know, flags that were used to represent states really only existed for military purposes. Um, in which case, like I said, fast forward to the American Civil War, the Lord Baltimore flag is revived. Marylanders who fought for the North would use this uh, in battle uh, you know, to represent the state that they're from. And Marylanders who fought for the South, they actually they went in a different direction. Uh, this, this is where the state coat of arms really gets dissected uh, in this uh, conflict, the American Civil War. Marylanders who fought for the South used this, the Crossland Banner. All right. Um, the Crossland Banner uh, was the it was the coat of arms of. Let me make sure I have this right. Cecil Calvert's grandmother, George Calvert's mother. Okay. Um, for whatever reason, her coat of arms was not allowed to continue on by itself, in which case it was quartered, like you see in the Maryland flag today, right here. That's how we get this, okay? Um, and there's, herald there's a heraldic reasoning for that, uh, and that gets even more involved into a subject that's, you know, it's related to flags, but it's, you know, it's not germane to the subject uh, of flags here. Um, so anyway, um, Marylanders who fought for the South used the Crossland Banner, the red and white cross botany, okay? Um, and also, additionally to this, there was a Maryland general who fought for the, uh, the Confederacy, General Bradley Johnson. He had his own personal flag. He used this. Uh, it was a uh, white flag with a red cross botany on it, with a red border, and it has... Um, you know, this neat uh, flowy tail at the end of this flag. It's what we call a swallowtail flag. All right, it's kind of pennant-like. Um, but this was his personal flag. He flew this at his headquarters, and I'm just, I wouldn't be surprised if it was used in uh, American Civil War battles as well. All right, so this was truly a Maryland rebel flag. So after the American Civil War is over, you know, there's reconciliation, the North won, the South lost. So, for the very first time, this flag, the current state flag of Maryland, was actually used for the very first time in uh, 1880 at a battle monument dedication in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So that was the very first time this flag was flown. It was flown again a second time uh, at a parade uh, marking the 150-year anniversary of uh, the founding of Baltimore City. Uh, and I believe that was in, that would have been in the late 1880s, maybe early 1890s, I'd have to double check that, but it was around that time frame. Uh, so fast forward to 1904, the Maryland General Assembly officially adopts this as our state flag. All right, that's when state flags gained notoriety and became uh, popular was the, uh, the early uh, 1900s. Um, there's some people out there who claim, and I haven't found concrete evidence to support this, but there's some people out there who claim that because the North won the Civil War, the American Civil War, the black and yellow goes up top, and the red and white goes down at the bottom. Um, I, I think that's more of a myth than anything. Um, you know, folklore or whatever you want to call it, um, but if you look at the Maryland State Seal, which is where this flag comes from, that predates the American Civil War by a long time. Uh, so I'm not sure how much validity there is to that, but I've heard that over the years uh, in, you know, conversations with other historians who've studied uh, Maryland history. Um, so anyway, this particular flag is made by Annan. That's one of it's one of the largest flag companies in the country. And the reason I bring that up is because if you look at this flag, the botany crosses have their own style. When you compare it to this flag, manufactured by the Eater Flag Company, you'll see that the cross botanies end 
differently. They have a different shape, okay, as compared to the Annan one I just held up here. All right. Every single flag company that I know of has a different version of what the cross botanies are supposed to look like. All right. Even this little stick flag here is a little bit different. Okay. Um, and I researched this, and it turns out that there is no uh, specifics in the Maryland Flag Code or anywhere in the state constitution specifically outlining exactly what the cross botanies are supposed to look like. So a lot of manufacturers, they, they just go with their own interpretation, and that's official. I mean, they're all perfectly legal, legit, official Maryland state flags. It just depends who manufactured it. Uh, but the Annan one is my favorite. I think it looks the nicest. I'm just partial toward this one because, you know, this is the one that I, you know, I, I purchased the most and, you know, replaced my old ones with. Um, you know, so that, that's another uh, neat little uh, detail that most people wouldn't pick up on. Also, it's important to note that the black checker goes at the top. I've run into situations over the years where... I would order Maryland flags, and sometimes the header, this piece, would be sewed on this side, where the yellow checker's up top. That's incorrect, okay? Uh, every now and then, it happens. And, you know, it's an honest mistake. I mean, I can understand how that could happen. Um, but if you follow the, uh, the state flag code and, you know, pay attention to the you know, what the design looks like, that mistake shouldn't be made. So, black checker goes up top, all right? Um, other than that, um, that's it for the state flag. Um, there is one other thing that's cool about the Maryland flag besides its uh, wonderful colors, and that's this thing right here. Now, you're probably wondering, what in the world is this cross? <laughs> okay? <laughs> Um, this cross, this is called the cross botany, or the botany cross, it means the same thing, they're interchangeable. This is what goes on top of a single flagpole that carries the Maryland state flag. All right, and if you look closely, I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but um, there's a little gold botany cross on top of this stick, and I have one up there too. Um, this is a legally binding flagpole ornament. Um, it was adopted by the Maryland General Assembly in 1945 and signed into law by Governor Herb O'Connor. Um, it's not meant to be a religious symbol as it is a symbol of uh, Maryland's uh, uh, history, uh, the heraldic significance that's found in the flag uh, via the Botany Cross. Um, Many people understand that Maryland was founded as a haven for religious freedom, specifically for British Catholics, and, uh, but other religions were welcomed as well, and um, it was reflected in the state uh, coat of arms, and um, now it's reflected in a flagpole ornament, too. The reason uh, th this, this became a thing was because in the American Civil War, um, people like General Bradley Johnson, who had his own flag. Um, evidently, there's evidence throughout history to believe that Maryland regiments in the American Civil War used a gold cross botany on top of the flagstaffs that carried the flags that represented their state, whether it was uh, the Lord Baltimore flag for the North or for uh, the, uh, the Crossland banner uh, used to uh, represent Marylanders who fought for the South, okay? Um, so there, there's a lot of history uh, and uh, historical significance of the Gold Botany Cross in Maryland. Um, most people don't realize it, but if you look around uh, the state, you'll notice that there's most likely a Gold Botany Cross on top of the flagpole. So it's legally binding. Um, and it's yet another thing that makes Maryland uh, stand out from the rest of the 50 states. So anyway, that's the Maryland state flag in a nutshell. Again, I apologize for the length of this video.
but there was a lot of information to dispel here about our wonderful state flag. Um, so anyway, that's the old line state flag. Uh, this has been Chris, the flying team manager at the Kite Loft, and uh, I will be back next week at the same time for another edition of Fun with Flags. Peace!